I want to thank you for joining me on this Easter Tuesday. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, what a blessing it is to gather here today in your holy name to open up the scriptures that they might nurture us and inspire us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a really intriguing story, and that's really what we're reading during this season of Easter on the Tuesday nights for a Bible study are stories about the sharing of Jesus for the very first time to people who've never heard of it. Imagine that. We live in the grace of the resurrection. You and me, we've lived in that our entire lives. How privileged we have been. We are on this side of the resurrection. For the disciples, they lived most of their lives without knowing about the resurrection, what God came to do in their lives. Most of the people are hearing the gospel for the very are hearing this for the very first time in the scripture, and their eyes are just opened. And so let me tell you a little bit about this lesson for today. First of all, beginning with a story. See, right before our lesson for today that I'm going to read, there was a healing, a miracle that took place. Jesus, or Jesus, uh, Peter was was uh, in Jerusalem, and a man who was lame for birth, the Bible says, came up to him and begging, begging for money. Because, you know, a lame person, there wasn't social security. His family kicked him out of the house. There's no way for him to make a living unless accepted the generosity of people who would come and, and give him a coin or two or maybe a loaf of bread or whatever it would be. Uh, and so he had to beg every single day of his life just to stay alive. It was crazy. And he came up to Peter and said, Peter, can you give me some money? And Peter said, ah, silver and gold, I have none, but I will give you of what I do have. And, and Peter healed him. He prayed for God to heal him. I love this because this is really an anti-faith healing story. Okay? It's an anti-faith healer story. So, you know, all of these crazy uh, Christians in the United States of America who actually believe in the health, wealth, and prosperity doctrine, doctrine who actually believe that you have to have enough faith. You've got to send me some money before you're going to receive God's blessing. You've got to give something out before you get it in return. These stories of the scripture are anti-this, Okay? This man didn't have faith. This man didn't even ask for healing. He didn't give any money away, but yet he received from the blessing of God. I love this story. I love this story. And this leads into our lesson for today. This anti-faith healing story. People came who are hungry, who saw this take place, and they're like bewildered. What in the world is this that's going on? They're hearing and seeing this for the very first time, what God wanted to do. And so with that in mind, we read our lesson for today. So Peter saw the people that were gathering around. They were like, what in the world? We've seen this man. He was lame all of his life. What happened here? Peter saw it. And he said, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why are you staring at us as though, uh, as though by our own power or piety, we made this man walk. Okay. Um, Peter didn't ask for any money to give this man healing. He didn't ask the man whether he had enough faith. He just gifted the man the gift of healing because that's all he had to give. <laughs> How powerful is that? Faith healers ask you for money before they're going to deign to heal you. Come and throw your money in the plate. If you didn't receive healing, well, maybe it's because your spirit is not right with God. Do you think this lame man's spirit was right with God? The story doesn't tell us, and that's exactly the point. Healing comes from God. Peter shared it freely. And so I want to get this word up here. Free. By the way... Grace is a gift. A gift is always free. You know, there are certain things, and I understand, I make a living as a pastor. <clears throat> the congregation pays me so that I can pay attention to the ministry, to the members of the parish, and to the outreach in the community. And I'm grateful for that. 
But there are certain things I won't take money for. I won't take money for a baptism. Why? Because people, and I've, people do this all the time. I'll, I'll do a baptism in the family, and they'll come up $100, $150. Here, pastor, this is our gift of thanks. No. Give it to the church. It's fine. If you want to give it to the church as, as a gift of gratitude for what God has done, or if you want to give it away to somebody else, fine. But you do not give me money for doing a baptism. You don't give me money for giving away something that's free. Same thing with Holy Communion. We used to actually, in our church, we used to have a, a, a collection box. When people would come up uh, to the offering table, or to the offering, to the uh, communion table, they, had, they put in their money before they came to the altar. I find that really offensive. I mean, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to pay for the bread, the wine, and I get it. Churches need to do that. We have expenses. It's the real world. But there's something wrong with that image of having to pay before receiving a gift of God's grace. It was a free gift. Peter just said, I gave it. You're looking at me as though I gave it away, as though I made this thing happen. I'm just giving you something that God gave me, man. It's a free gift. <laughs> I love this. Go on. The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus. <laughs> Listen to that again. So he's trying to convince us, or Peter is trying to tell us, why he's doing what he's doing. Okay? So, let's put that question off. Why? Why would he give away this thing? Man, he could, this could be a real scam, man. We've got faith healers all over the United States of America living in their multi-million dollar houses by the scam they got going on, taking money from poor people, promising that they'll be healed. It's a scam, man. Jesus, however, Peter gives it away for free, and he's going to tell you why he gives away for free. So Peter's got no money. He could sure use some coinage in his pocket. He doesn't take any. He just gives away free the grace of God. This is the reason why. Look at this. The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus. Actually, Jesus' Jesus' name is actually Yeshua, or more accurately, Joshua, if we were to transliterate that into English. So if you know anybody named Joshua, you know a person named after Jesus. Just a little trivia thing. So the God of Abraham and Isaac, blah, 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 Jesus, go on. Jesus glorified his servant Jesus. So God glorified his servant Jesus. Remember, he's trying to tell you why he's giving it away for free. The one whom you delivered and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murder to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life. <gasps> they killed him. So it's almost like Peter is setting them up. You killed him. Shame on you. You're all going to die. Well, that's not what happens here. It sure sounds like what he's setting them up for. But listen to what he says. To this we are witnesses. His name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith which is through Jesus. Oh, let's get rid of that X now. That faith that is through Jesus. Think he's going to say, has made this man strong. And he has given this man perfect health in the presence of you all. Jesus made him strong. When he talks about the faith in Jesus, he's talking about this Jesus, but this man didn't have faith. The faith of or about Jesus. It was Jesus himself that made this man strong as a free gift. He's not going to take money for it. He's not going to make a profit on it. He's going to give away freely what he has received freely from God. Oh, verse 17. Now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. 
When? When you put this Jesus to death. But what God foretold by mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore. Turn again away from your sins, that they may be blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Oh, this is beautiful. He says, you know what? You rejected this Jesus. You killed him. But he still wants to bless you. You lived on the other side of the resurrection. Peter did too. What did Peter do before the resurrection? He denied his best friend, Jesus. Jesus forgave him. He turned around and followed Jesus. And now they have the opportunity too. Now we hear this word repent. And I want to be really cautious about this. Because we really mystify this word. We, we it, Wrongly so, as though it's repent. <laughs> it simply means turn around. You're going this way. It's a hard way. You don't have Jesus in your life. Turn around. Follow the path that Jesus set for you. Because he's going to walk with you and he's going to heal you. So why does Peter do what he does? Why does he freely give healing in the name of Jesus? Because this Jesus healed him. Filled his cup. And now Peter wants to share freely what God has given to him through Jesus Christ. I'm asking for God's healing for you tonight. And I don't know what form that's going to take. It might be a physical healing. Maybe it'll be an emotional healing. Maybe you're troubled. Maybe your relationship with your spouse or your child is broken. I'm going to pray for healing for you right now. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If God heals you tonight, I'm going to tell you to do something or actually not to do something, don't send me anything. Not a dime. Don't send the congregation I serve anything. If God touches you and heals you, here's what I'm asking that you do. You go out and pray on behalf of somebody else and bring God's healing into that person's life. Don't pay me back for something I didn't do. Give away what God has given to you, to somebody who needs it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the blessing that you just dumped upon us, God. It's been a, a downpour of blessing. You've showered your blessings upon us, and we give you thanks for that. And so as you have richly blessed us and freely given to us, help us in turn to give freely what we've received without expectation of being paid, of receiving something in return. We've received freely, and so we give freely that people's lives might be touched and transformed. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, may the Lord bless you and keep you and send you forth in peace this day in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.